Welcome back to Go To Hydroponics here in lovely Wisconsin. Of course, we're in like gloomy, gloomy Wisconsin today. A little overcast, not too shabby out though, breezy, but we'll try to keep the wind down so you guys can hear me okay. So of course, hit the subscribe button if you guys haven't already. Comments and tell me improvements or anything you want to specifically see. I know one person requested, uh, specifically requested was the pH down, like the DIY pH down. So this is pH down and acid by Dermal Hydroponics. And it, uh, it, this is powdered. It doesn't, you can't buy it anymore unless you want to buy like 36 pounds of it or some ridiculous amount. They don't sell it in nice little small amounts. You have to buy liquid. Well, the liquid, if I have 40 gallons of water, I need to pH down a fair amount. That gets pretty costly after a while. So I'm looking for a cheaper method. So if you look up what pH down really is, is it says phos phosphoric acid. Now, you can also buy plain phosphoric acid. This is what I was talking about last time, that there was a big bottle of acid sitting on my table, which there is, still is, still unopened actually. So, we got gloves of course, safety glasses that are going to go on now. Because this is 87% food grade phosphoric acid, uh, ordered right from Amazon. It was like, I think it was 25 bucks for this quart. So let's pop it open here. Grab a key. First of all, one red flag is it comes in a box that pretty much screams as corrosive. This is the corrosive label. I'm not sure why they don't have it written on there. Maybe it's not that bad. I don't know. Arrow up. Arrow up. Make sure you open it the right way. That's for sure. So, pull it out. They have a leak-proof uh, absorbent pad, and it's wrapped in a bag. Just in case it does leak, uh, it doesn't make a huge mess and burn things. And Yeah. So, that's, uh, that's reassuring. What have I got myself into, people? What have I got myself into? So, we have a little receipt here. It says, one quart, 950 milliliters, 85% food grade, phosphoric acid, rust remover, clean etched metal. That's what they're using it for, but I'm using it for hydroponics. This is by Duda Energy, LLC. So, let's, uh, let's undo this bag here. Now when I got it shipped, I didn't have to pay anything more for shipping. It was just what it was like, the $25 or whatever it said for a quart of this. Now of course, it says rust remover on it, so take that as being uh, very powerful. So make sure you do not spill this on your skin or anything else in the surrounding area because it'll probably eat through it. Okay, we got the knot on done. Pop it up big. Got the freaking foam pad. God, that's freaking me out. Um, by the way, these are nitrile gloves. They are for painting, automotive, and cleaning. And they, what are these? These are, I believe, they're the thicker gloves. And latex, latex is not thick enough for this. But nitrile is they're pretty durable and chemical resistant. We got rid of the spill proof padding here. Phosphoric acid. Now it's still wrapped in, the top is pla plastic wrapped again. Wow, why did I buy this? Okay, danger contains phosphoric acid. Danger may cause burns, harmful or swallow, cause serious eye damage. So make sure you freaking wear safety glasses. Do not swallow, do not inhale fumes, mist or sprays, do not get on skin, do not eat or drink this product. Here, slightly close. Oh my God! Wow, that's uh, that is kind of worrying me. Okay, now one thing about acid is that there's two different ways to mix it with water. There is one way that'll uh, pretty much cause lots of issues. Could burn you. Could almost kill you. Set fire. And the other way is fine. So when you dump water into acid, it makes a concentrated solution but the acid still reacts with the water, causing the acid to boil and could bubble it everywhere and melt the container it's in and cause a fire or who knows what. So always make sure you dump acid into water. For sure, it's always acid into water, otherwise you have big issues, remember that. Okay, so we're gonna undo the tape here. I'm serious. 
Remember, if you guys aren't subscribed already, hit that little red button down there. If you like what I'm doing, if you got any suggestions or want to see anything else, comment and give me a tip of what I should be doing either better or things to advise that would make it more interesting for you personally. Oh, we're ripping some of the label off here. I don't want to do that. Okay. Got my acid. So, okay, this is another reason why I'm doing it outside in case it does spill, it's going on the concrete. I got a hose I can wash it off with. If something else happens, it's outside, there's no fumes, no nothing like that, so it's a lot safer out here. So down here I have, let's move my camera. Down here I got my uh, Blue Lab pH meter sitting in the water for a while now. So we're gonna check the pH. So I got about, let's say, let's say five gallon buckets. We got about what? Three and a half gallons? Or, sorry, four, four and a half, 4.75 gallons. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna add some drops of this acid and see how strong it really is. Just so I can kind of have an idea of where what I'm working with. I don't know if I should dilute it out of the bottle or just use the bottle straight. I'm not sure yet. So I got my pH, blue, my Blue Lab Guardian here sitting here. Uh, this is city water, not well water. It's pH at eight right now, 66 degrees and 210 parts per million in the water alone. That's what my city water comes out of the tap. In. So let's try adding some acid. So we're gonna, I think we're gonna try some drops. We got my wooden stirring stick. Move you guys in here a little bit more. These syringes I bought off Amazon as well. I'm hoping these will be fine. This is a stainless steel tube, so it shouldn't be chemical reactive at all. And these are plastic. So I'm thinking, no, these, they're clean. So it's not like you'll have a problem, but I would make sure, I was thinking about rinsing it out with water first, but I would advise not to do that. Like I was saying before, the water is gonna boil with the acid and I don't know what it would do to this or it could overheat and melt this and just be very cautious of this. So we grab some acid here. So we got a little bit in there. Now we're gonna add a few drops and stir and add a few drops and stir. One thing I noticed when you add it in the water, it, um, creates a little white wisp in the water like it's reacting. <laughs> this stuff, stuff is a little powerful, isn't it? Okay, so that's, that was almost like, I would say, let's say a drop. We're gonna give her a good old stir here and just see if it even changes it. Okay, I think we're gonna have to add at least, ooh, wow. Okay, dropped it down 0.1. We're gonna add about, I think we'll add five drops. One. Two, three, four, five. We're gonna give that a good old stir. Drop another 0.1 pH. We're also gonna put the lid on this acid so I don't spill it and I don't know what would happen. <laughs> okay, we're at 7.7. .7. Definitely not as strong as I was thinking in my head it was gonna be. So it's, I mean, of course it would probably bring your skin. I'm not gonna push it that way. But as a standpoint of not thinning it out, I think I'll be fine. I think I'll just add it straight to the water very generally, or not generously, very lightly and kind of see, just adjust it slowly in my big reservoirs. Cause we're at 7.6. So we'll have to add another, I would say at least 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, that was another 10 drops, so let's give her a good stir. We're at 7.3 already, 7.2. Definitely effective. You do not have to add much to get freaking places. Still have to add a good amount for a good volume though. 7.2 and it looks like it's holding stable. So I mean it takes, you know, it takes a little bit to get down. It's almost like adding pH well, I guess it's adding way less pH down liquid, that's for sure. It's definitely way stronger than that. I don't know how strong, but it is definitely stronger than that. Let's add another uh, 10 drops. The syringe kind of squirted out on me. It didn't, it didn't come out in the nice little drips. I might have to buy some plastic pipe bets and then it'd be easier to control. So let's give that a stir. That might, be, that might have been a little too much. We'll see here. Seven, 6.9, 6.8. 
Or it might be perfect, actually. We'll see here. Oh, I went down to 6.8. I thought I was going to go further than that. Oh, that was a lot. That went down very fast. So that's 6. Went to like 6.8 to 6 all of a sudden. Oh, it's going back up. 6.2. Believing this concentrate is definitely feasible. Just make sure if you have kids, make sure you keep it locked up. Uh, you know, it's it's the safety. You have to wear gloves, safety glasses every time you use it. It's more of a hassle, I could see. Definitely cheaper, but more of a hassle and a uh, hazard. We're at 6.3, so we're just going to add right, just a little squirt. Nothing much. Add a little bit more. That was, ah, uh, might have been a little too much. Oh, yep, yeah, that went real fast. We're down to five. Shut down to five real quick. Oh, now it's going back up. The acid must have got to the probe first before it uh, circulated through the water. 5.7, 5.8. This is uh, definitely feasible. So here you go. The guys that want to know about the uh, pH, the phosphoric acid, it's uh, not bad stuff actually. It's just, again, it's very strong. To do five gallons, to get it down to where I need to be, I could add just a little bit more, but I'm lucky if I used a milliliter. Now think about that compared to liquid pH down. I would have had to use like, what, maybe a shot glass full to get it down this far? Yeah, so I use half a millimeter, half a milliliter to one milliliter. So uh, it is very potent stuff. Be extremely careful with this. Oh, uh, you know what? I got some scrap metal. I'm going to see how strong it really is because it says rust remover on it. So I'm going to take this little thing and squirt it on some rusty metal and uh, see what happens. Just to prove to you guys that it is strong. So we are uh, back here. The only thing rusty around my house I could apparently find was uh, some screws. Sorry, there's bugs on me. Anyways, so got some rusty screws here. Uh, just three regular coated whatever screws. We're going to drip some of that phosphoric acid on here and just kind of see what it does. Hold it <laughs> downwards, of course, and uh, with my gloves on, I'll get them a little wet. Don't, I'm not going to get on my fingers, of course. To be honest, I don't really see it reacting at all. I don't see any bubbling or any smoke or any heat or... Definitely has a different property though because there's some in the screw's head, the Phillips screw head. When you tip it over, it wants to stay connected to the screw. It doesn't really want to come out. It's like a... It's almost like the property of like a syrup where it wants to stay on things. So now as I see, so I'm assuming you have to, this is like a rust soaker. Because now one of the screw heads is starting to bubble up a little bit. As you might be able to see that, it's all white in the top of that head. The other ones are all full of liquid and I don't see any bubbling yet. More like a rust removing solution. Yeah, it's not, it's not super strong, but it definitely would not be fun to touch. So we're going to rinse everything out in water and dilute it all so there won't be any <laughs> chemical reactions with whatever in case there really is. You know, I'm not a scientist, of course. This is just something I want to do because of hydroponics. So hopefully you guys learned from this. Uh, be very careful if you do do this. So yeah, now I got to get to making my regular hydroponic. I'll keep you guys posted and updated with my hydroponic girl behind me. So over and out.